Welcome to the Friends of Friends podcast. Here are your hosts, Henry Hargitay and Jason Cole. Ha! Wherever you get your podcast, we are there, Friends of Friends podcast. I'm Hank. Oh, I just said Hank. I'm kind of flowing right now. I've been saying Henry most of the time, but I just said Hank. Uh, anyway, that's my boy Ish over there. What's up, Ish? What's up, y'all? What's going on, baby? Oh, man, I'm all good. All right, so let's get into this because yesterday was a very important day in my life. Uh, I was unfortunately busy, so I didn't have time to go celebrate with him, but it was Jason's birthday yesterday. And uh, he, you know, like I said, he was busy. I was busy. It was a little tough to connect. But uh, since this is our podcast and normally he's here, I just wanted to wish my man uh, a very happy birthday because at the end of the day, uh, you know, we should be thinking about this stuff every day. Uh, But sometimes, you know, it only comes up on their birthday. So I just want to make sure this was said, not just now, uh, but always. One of the things I like to think about on someone's birthday is just, you know, how do you say thank you to them? for being the person that they are. And, you know, when Jason comes to mind, you know, I kind of just think, how do you even begin to thank the person, you know, who truly values your success as much as his own, if not more? Uh, He, you know, he's one of those guys. And it's like, how do you even begin to thank someone for putting your interests ahead of their own, literally constantly? Uh, People who don't know Jason don't know how much he does this. You know, how do you even begin to thank who just goes above and beyond to make you happy every single time, you know, and I'll say this while juggling more obstacles than most people could even fathom. Um, you I know, say, he's I say this a lot, man, with him. I say, exactly. Uh, he's, one uh, he's one, none before, none to come. Someone who, uh, you know, really came from very little, but has gone on to inspire an unthinkable amount of people and gives back to everyone he encounters. Uh, Jason, my man, you're not with us right now, but thank you. Happy birthday. Um, and my absolute favorite thing about Jason is champ. and will always be that he can't guard me and I'll always be a better shooter than him. But anyway, happy birthday, King. I wish you could be here on this episode right now, but we'll be talking to you later. I'm be talking crazy, bro. <laughs> uh, Yo, funny stuff. Yesterday, we was out for his birthday. We have a legendary story. Me, Jason, Joey, three on three versus Clive, Ojo, and Nate. We won. That's a fact. Super fact. We spoke about it yesterday. Oh, Joe, know what's up. When he watches, oh, I seen your face yesterday. How many did you, you have? What's going on? I had triple double. <laughs> and the win. Where was this? Impact zone? No, this was there was there was still a call in the race. So I'm not sure what gym we ended up actually playing in. That I don't remember, but we did have a three-on-three, and we won. And there's no Super footage. Fact. No, there's no footage. But but Ojo confirmed yesterday. He denied it because, of course, he's going to deny it with a group of people. He want to look bad. You know, you got a really old guy in Joseph. You know, Jay was mid-shape and on the chubby dude. Yeah. Can't say to get out to us. But they did. <laughs> they did. I love it. All right. But like I said, no footage. Anyway, uh, stuff that is real and that we can talk about right now. uh, Some drama over in Brooklyn. Neither of us are Nets fans. I always thought the Nets were a little corny. But uh, your thoughts on KD requesting trade-ish? I'm not a fan of it. I'm not a fan of it because they didn't didn't win anything. So it's like you make this whole show, you leave Golden State, right? You win two championships in Golden State. You leave because you want to be the guy. That's the sense that I got from him leaving and going to Brooklyn, you know. Let's win something here for them. Let, let me be the guy. Like Charles Barkley said, let me be the bus driver, right? So you come to Brooklyn. Injuries happen, right? The whole, you know, the things going on with Kyrie, you know, it is what it is. He took a stance and I don't agree with it, but I understand why he did it, right? Cool. So... You now want to leave a team, and now you ask to be on Phoenix and the Heat at the top of his list, correct? They're both the best teams on each conference. So you look crazy to me because it's like you want to be the guy, but you stay joining teams that's, that are already made and are already established and already have a winning culture. So it's like, are you that guy or are you just the best side joint ever? Yeah. That's tough, man. I don't, I don't, I don't like it, especially in his caliber. He, he's like one of the best players ever, bro. As far as talent wise, 
Like so stay there and win. That's a good place for me to jump in because I wholeheartedly disagree with you. But I actually think the last point is that that you just made is the emphasis of my argument, and that's that KD is smart to leave this situation, and I love that he's leaving this situation because he realized. Uh, let me put this in layman terms first. Going to play basketball with Kyrie is like falling in love with this stripper, kind of. You know what I mean? It's like it's fun. It's exciting. Me, but you might have like the best night of your life, you know, doing that. But over the course of a lifetime, you might run into some drama in that relationship. You might get a little insecure in that relationship. The other person, you know, is going to be having to miss big moments because of some drama. I'm not saying it's anyone's fault with Kyrie. Uh, but that's my point. And ultimately, the story of life and the story of basketball is that good talent is never enough. And all that Brooklyn Nets team was, was just some incredible talent. I'd even go as far to say in my young millennial life, in my 25 years on this earth, that might be the most talented, most skilled duo I've ever seen play basketball. Just that as, didn't win anything. Well, that's my point. Win or didn't win. Talent, like I said, is a different category. There's a difference between being talented and being a great player, I don't think KD will ever go down as an all-time great player. I think he'll always just be like the Iverson type where Iverson was one of the best talents ever. Kyrie might be one of the best talents ever, but when it comes to the greatest player ever, no one is going to seriously consider those guys in that discussion. I don't know about KD. KD is different, bro. Seven feet, can shoot at the handle, take it to the room. He could score anywhere, bro, at any given time. That's a little I, – I, I mean, again, I don't agree with his decision on wanting a trait, but you can't deny what he is. He's great. He's a great talent. Uh, for me, I just – I feel like you, you, you should stay – and you should ride it out because, and also too, you, you signed a four year deal, bro. Like mm -hmm. you really got to see that out. Cause I know if I'm Brooklyn, I'm not gonna trade him to where he wants to go. I'm gonna get the best offer for him. No. And again, you didn't win here. We don't really owe you anything, and we had to deal with everything that you that you made us go through with Kyrie. Yeah. So I know if I'm Brooklyn, I'm not doing all that. Like if, if we're gonna trade you, I'm gonna get the best pack for you. Absolutely. Yeah. And the funny part is he had, or maybe not so funny for him, but he doesn't have a no trade clause. Right. And they mentioned that because the the plan was to do this in Brooklyn. Yeah. And no opt out neither. So it's four straight years now. Wherever yeah. you go. Yeah. All right. Last thing though. Where do you think he ends up ultimately? For for chaos. And just for like the world to have storyline, I would like to go back to Golden State. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually with you. <laughs> I, I would like him to go back to Golden State just because, like, one, I feel like he won there. So I doubt he goes back there, you know, the slander won't be too crazy. And just to see the dynamic, like the yeah. fact that you left for a few years, they won with you, mm -hmm. without you, you know, just to see if, if that will still work. Because when he was on Golden State, there was untouchable. Like, yeah. LeBron is my favorite player. And when they played it in the finals, it was like it, it, it was it was David versus Goliath. Just as far as like you can't, like, it was too much. Nobody was being them, bro. Nobody. No. Nobody was being them. Uh, but you did you say you're a LeBron fan like that? Like you're one of those guys, right? Yeah, that's my guy. I'm a realist, dog. Keep you know, I keep it real. I'm not. I'm not. I do. I absolutely do. I love LeBron. That's my guy. Yeah. Fair enough. All right. A happy belated birthday, Jason. We love you, King. Uh, Good morning, day, G's. Always a pleasure. We'll talk soon. Thanks for checking out the Friends of Friends podcast. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and tell a friend.